be a master at anything. We all have to sacrifice something. Um, people might think you're mad, but the thing about it is that once you reach that journey, you did the job you were put here for. One hour outside of New York City, in the town of Great Neck, Long Island, you'll find the Ortiz Martial Arts and Chinese Boxing Academy. Raul Ortiz is the school Sifu, a Chinese word that loosely translates to master. It's here that Sifu Ortiz trains his students in the rare, well-regarded, and very dangerous style of seven-star praying mantis. You know, like our style of seven-star mantis, it's, uh, it's a little over 500 years old. You know, it was uh, created back in 1644 by Wang Lung, a monk. It was about how the, the, the mantis, as a predator, you know, how it caught its prey, and they wouldn't give up its turf. He was a very knowledgeable uh, martial artist himself, and based on the most prominent fighters back in those days during the wars, what he did was he copied from 17 masters their famous technique. Right from the outside. So how I teach it here is, is maiming and you know like a predator. It's a, that's how you, you teach it. It's not a pretty style. It's about maiming and, and basically killing. There you go. So many of you feel that content. That's what you want to do. In the early 70s, the young Sifu Ortiz, inspired by Bruce Lee's role as Kato in the Green Hornet began his study of Kung Fu in New York's Chinatown. The New York of Raoul's youth was a dangerous place, filled with gang violence and racial tension, but Kung Fu helped him to rise above the chaos of the era. If you know, you know anything about the five boroughs, I grew up in the Bronx, okay, and I grew up in Fort Apache. So, I remember growing up in the 60s, seeing people shooting up with uh, dope, you know, heroin, all that stuff, and um, listening to people like, oh, you know, you're a product of your environment. And I knew that there was something better, okay? I didn't know how I was gonna get it, but I knew there was something better. Once I started training martial arts, it just, I just started to believe in who I was, started getting that confidence in myself. I was, I was staying healthy, I didn't have time to hang out, and, and, and in my neighborhood, the, uh, the, the Savage Skulls started to be formed, which was a gang back in the days. And most of the people that lived in my neighborhood became members of the Savage Club. I didn't have time for that because of the fact that I was going doing Kung Fu, right? So I was in another gang that was healthy for me. Okay, hands together. So we start kicking punch. This is what I want, ready? One. As you step out, you parry. Parry, kick and punch at the same time. Ready? One. Sifu Ortiz didn't discover Praying Mantis until after he had graduated from college. Already an accomplished and decorated fighter on the karate-dominated tournament circuit of the 70s and 80s, Sifu Ortiz had a chance encounter with Sifu Kenny Keeler, a Mantis practitioner. Sifu Keeler's effective use of classical technique inspired the young Sifu Ortiz to begin his training in Seven Star Mantis. First of all, the teachers that I have were very tough, and it was, it was about combat. And so when I got into the martial arts, and especially the Prey Mantis, it was because of the fact that the first Mantis instructor that I had, man, he was so good at combat. His application not just blew me out of the water. And to see somebody be able to fight like that, <clears throat> quick, and accurate with the technique, I, I said to myself, I need to know how to do this. It was very classical, you're like, pow, like in the movie, moving like that, you know, you're like, whoa. Most people fight, you know, in the kickbox. And he was actually using classical technique. And so when I saw that, that's what intrigued me the most. I was like, oh, I gotta learn this. this. I mean, the guy is actually using it. Ready, by count again. One, two. <clears throat> Three. One, two. You know, you get a lot of techniques that are very flowery in Kung Fu, but there's no wasted motion in Kung Fu. 
So if you learn how to apply that actually in combat, then you know that here's a grab, this is a break. Once I grab the arm and step in. So there's different applications for, you know, multiple applications for one technique. And we try to put them in actual action based on the traditional movements. Wipe off. So remember, I, I can't just wipe off and stay here. I have to get a reaction from it, and that's the reaction that I want. Yes. Okay? Right. Let's see how we're doing here, guys. You know, it's funny because when I met my current teacher now, Grandmaster Lee Kang Wen, the first thing he ever told me was, there's no secret or mysticism in Kung Fu. And when I looked at him and when he said that, I knew right there and then I had a teacher for life. There was no BS, it was, it's only hard work. You train and you develop your technique. So when I hear somebody that, that says, oh, that style didn't work, I'm doing this now. Well, then you failed the style because you didn't practice it. The adversities we face often define the people we grow up to be. Growing up as a Puerto Rican in the Bronx in the 60s and 70s, racism and prejudice were not uncommon for the young Sifu Ortiz. The study of Kung Fu, however, inadvertently opened him up to a new type of prejudice. <clears throat> it's sad how, not so much nowadays, but still you get it a lot, how people perceive you. Um, because I, I'm, I'm Latino and they'll look at you and, and the worst thing is sometimes when I'm talking to somebody and they're looking at you and I look at them and I'm going to my, saying to myself, this person is judging me by his lack of knowledge. And only because I don't have the Asian eyes, but if I was Asian and I told him I could walk on walls, he believed me. So I used to be forced to train harder and train my students harder, just for that simple fact. You know what? I'm not Chinese. So we gotta train harder to prove these people that our Kung Fu is good or even better than theirs. Good. Two. Bye. Although love of Kung Fu drove him to mastery, teaching is Sifu Ortiz's true drive. To me, what gets me the most is when I have a student that comes in, that he's handicapped or extremely overweight, uh, no confidence whatsoever. I mean, he's been kicked and everything. And all of a sudden you see that person within a year transform himself into like walking with his head high and then having skills. Then it's like, wow, that's why I teach. I was 200 and almost 290 pounds. So yeah, now I'm, I lost about 80 pounds um, in the last five years. Um, uh, I started out with him and he just, I mean, I could barely even lift my foot and kick it without like almost falling over. <laughs> he's given me a lot, I gotta tell you, I'm a little, yeah, embarrassed about talking about it, but uh, he's given me a certain amount of confidence, you know, that I didn't have, and, um, you know, in terms of certain things, and, um, you know, that I could do these things that I thought I could never do, so. Four. Five. Having spent almost his whole life dedicated to Kung Fu in all aspects, Sifu Ortiz sees mastery not as an end goal, but as a process. Well, you know, mastering, what, what, what does mastering something mean, right? When people say, oh, you know, this is master so-and-so. In, in reality, you can't master something that continues to develop. You're called a master because of the fact of the years that you've been doing it. That passion to develop that has gone to everything else in life, okay? Music, painting, relationships. It's about being a master in everything that you do. And that's why when we say martial arts is a way of life, we're not just talking about kicking and punching. It's the, the, the focus and the concentration and the dedication and the discipline that it takes for me to develop that, it's the same that I have to put in everything that I do in life. And if you, you know, you talk to people, you find out sometimes, most people walk, walk life without passion. You know, and life without passion, man, that sucks. Stick around to learn some Kung Fu after the break. Most people try one, two, three, and punch. I'll uh, block it, because I'm disrupting the door. I step to the outside, check, grab, this comes in, I pull it. And ah! Let's say you give me a haymaker, okay? Now, if I block that haymaker from here, it's gonna go right in, mm -hmm. and it's gonna hit me. So when you come with a haymaker, ah. you have to step in and stop it there. Now, 
We all have a natural mechanism that we do this. So now when you come in with a haymaker, yes! that's what I do. <clears throat> so now on the other choy, what I want to be able to do is when I grab you and pull, most people try to one, two, three and punch. And that's not wrong, but I can't really disrupt your thought process. So now when you throw that, that punch and I actually grab it and pull, ah! that little jerk, you should feel that coming right down your spine. Pow! It's mm -hmm. gonna allow me to be able to throw my punch without you being able to punch. I'll block it, because I'm disrupting the throw process. Ah! So I can either start with the, uh, the rich hand or the punch. The action doesn't matter. It can be an elbow. So notice how I put the body in. It pulls in as you grab. So I, I, go, I grab here, hook, and then here, and then I switch my body. So that when I pull, I have that little jerk. Okay, and that's the plucking. That's the little choy on that part. So that you can hit. There's jab cross, one, two, up. That's my sweep. Okay. As you throw me the jab, I'm gonna check it into the inside. You throw the cross, I step to the outside, check, grab. I'm gonna turn my foot and give you a feel of straight towards the neck. As the person blocks, then you sweep the leg. So basically what's happening, I'm aiming high and striking low. And the other one will be a jab, and I go with an ala choy and try to come in like with a ridge hand. As I come in with that ridge hand and you block, I notice that the arm is going in that direction. I'm gonna bow with the force. So this comes in, I pull it, and, <laughs> and come right into the neck, using my forearm. Yes. Okay, so it comes in and hit. One, two, yes. three. I can also switch that direction. Comes with the jab. Come in, switch here, yeah. come on that side. So basically to give him, okay? Comes in, go right side, and then come to the left. Okay? So right from here, what? Yeah. Okay? So now you're, you're, you're attacking the neck, mm. okay? So from short range, you can have enough power ah. to actually hurt the person. Yes, sir. Okay? 